Namaste. So we take up today a short prayer, but uh, it's a very powerful prayer, prayer. One of the shortest prayers of Mother is one of the most uh, beautiful prayers, um, where she says, "Oh Lord, teach me to be the instrument of Thy love." But in this prayer, she teaches us, um, reveals to us, what is it that humanity needs most, and. Um, Normally we think that humanity needs uh, clothes, uh, money. People think that you know money is the most important thing, or house, roti kapda makan, or various other things. But what is it that humanity suffers from most, and what is needed of her servitors? See, work. Normally we think only outer work, but if we do outer work, but inwardly we are uh, spreading disharmony, we are uh, quarrelling, we are spreading anger, hatred. Then what is the use? We may be, you know, seemingly working for the divine outwardly, but inwardly we are cancelling that work. So here she is revealing to us a totally, amazingly beautiful dimension of her service, and something which all of us can be. Uh, we need not. Uh, that question was asked: Do we need to join an ashram to do mother's work? Well, obviously not. Mother's what really is her work? What kind of humanity we should be? So this is a. Beautiful prayer related to that, where she is asking something from the Lord. So when we stand before the Divine, we ask many things normally for a uh, from our basic survival needs to abundance outwardly. But what is she asking us? Asking the Lord. This is a prayer dated June seventeenth, nineteen fifteen. Very beautifully worded prayer. Grant, O Lord. that i may be like a fire that illumines and warms so there is a fire that can hurt a fire that can scorch a fire that can be like a blazing sun you see that's why when you see uh, some of the writings of shirbindra and the mother it is something very interesting the mother seems to beautifully intercede between that blazing sun and the humanity which is striving and struggling here and classic example is when we read in the mother very often people have asked and it's there in mother's writings also uh, where shirobindo says do not imagine that truth and falsehood can stay together so they asked her and then she explains so beautifully now she has brought it so she comes down right near us and how does she do it how does the sun give warmth by veiling itself in so many layers and giving us only that much which gives us light and warmth because if she were to reveal herself in all that splendor she once at one place says that never invoke justice because if i if it were to manifest none of you will be able to stand and then she says i have come here to manifest grace so look at it this is the sun which illumines and gives warmth like a fire that illumines and warms like a fountain that takes away thirst like a tree that shelters and protects this is what we should be do we need to be in a particular space to be like that we can be anywhere we can be like the sun or the fire which gives warmth which illumines the understanding or we can be like the fountain fountain of what which quenches thirst love human beings need it they suffer from it and like a tree that shelters and protects men are so unhappy so ignorant they need so much to be helped but what is the true help this is the true help that we can render to humanity there is a very beautiful uh, essay of the mother on charity she speaks about different kinds of charity when today somebody asked about helping humanity so how do we help humanity this is a very ignorant kind of help where we just build hospitals where we give free medicines that's hardly help in fact very often that kind of a thing has harmed humanity because it's something done in ignorance you build a hospital charitable hospital free hospital after some time because people know it's a free hospital so they go there after some time they have lost their natural defenses to fight against illness see this what has happened that uh, you know shubindra says that no doubt modern science has unveiled a marvelous surgery but it has taken away the uh, natural immunity which people used to develop we grew up like many of us who have grown up in villages know that we didn't know so many medicines and so much and we used to get well because the body knew how to handle things 
but now we have lost it why because we have so many hospitals so many doctors and so much intervention all these things now we have entered that cycle we can't go back you can't undo the hospital but we have to now look in the direction of developing our own natural immunity because everything is here and that's why probably all these epidemics are a way to show us that where the real fault line is the fault line is not in the virus he's just doing his job the fault line is that we don't have the immune system to fight against the virus what kind of immune system is this it succumbs it should respond why not our body has responded to countless pathogens in in the past why can't it respond to that similarly at one place when shirbindo was asked what is it that is missing in today's times the one number one biggest problem this the question of the month in arya in arya there used to be question of the month and shirbindo says the deliberate reconciliation of reason and faith so either we develop reason but by the diminution of faith or we have faith and we just don't develop reason we say no no i just have faith but the deliberate bringing together now how do we do it very simple what is faith faith is something that tells us which is going to be it's an intuitive perception let's say that human beings have tremendous capacities and potential which can develop now this is faith because you if you go into data you will see a yogi here and there but otherwise generally human beings are the same kind but if you have this faith you will rationally start proceeding in that direction step by step so faith leads and reason comes to fill in the gaps even reason can be an instrument of a higher will and higher intelligence where the truth that manifest takes the form of reason and logically extends itself rather than from below upward so these are the real things that humanity needs it needs faith it needs hope it needs courage and it needs to be protected it, this need for security is so strong in human nature because we are surrounded with dangers of course true security is inside but till we discover that security there is always a need of someone mother says that the attitude of normal humanity towards super humanity what will be it like it will be like towards some higher beings benevolent beings see how do what do we do with gods we go and pray in the temple and believe now there is god is there with us so similarly humanity has to develop to a point see she is also indicating what will be the super humanity of the future it will not be an arrogant super humanity oh i know it you don't know i am a superior person because i have practiced yoga sadhana none of this on the contrary there is a very beautiful um, uh, some very nice uh, things along similar lines you know one of those rahim's uh, couplets one of the place he says bada hua to kya hua जैसे पेड़ खजूर बैठन को पंथी को छाया नहीं फल लागे अति दूर यू मे बी वेरी ग्रेट हाई टॉल वट इज हाउ डज इट मैटर इवन दी डेट पाम ट्री इज वेरी टॉल बट यू कांट इवन टेक शेल्टर अंडर इट इट डजेंट गिव शेड एंड द फ्रूट्स आर देयर बट वेरी टॉप मच ऑन द टॉप यू कांट रीच आउट देयर यू कांट इवन pluck it by throwing a stone because for all you know the stone and the date both will fall on your head so bada hua to kya hua jaise ped khajur then at another place this is very nice where he says ki the river flows it doesn't ask money to pro- to quench thirst and it gives an example of how humanity should be so she is saying how humanity should be how we should be instead of just uh, you know little development little knowledge little uh, degree little something and little yoga people start becoming arrogant that we are you know or being closer to god the sign that one is close to god is that one becomes more and more humble why because one is close to god <laughs> one knows this is infinity the sign pride is a sign pride and arrogance that one is very far from god one touch of the divine makes a sambel because you realize my god this where am i standing even a great yogi will become humbled before the divine presence no there is a line in savitri where he says even the seer and sage see only uh, hypnotized by one luminous point they cannot behold the uh, greatness of the divine mother the whole world lives in a single ray of her sun so she is revealing to us what we should be like what the super humanity of tomorrow will be like she is aspiring for that what we should be like a stream a river that quenches thirst humanity is thirsty thirsty of what 
there is a beautiful prayer in prayers and meditation she says there is a thirst for love that no human relation can quench there is a need for peace that one finds nowhere not even in death there is a knowledge which no system of philosophy can capture it's not exact words maybe i can since we are at it it's a very beautiful prayer and uh, you know it's it's not difficult to find it yes so what what is humanity's need and there is the super humanity of tomorrow will be uh, embodying these aspects of the divine people often say serving humanity is to serve divinity not serving humanity in ignorance serving humanity is to serve the divine in humanity to fulfill those divine needs there is a power which no government can command a happiness which no earthly success can give so human beings are deprived of this a light which no wisdom can possess a knowledge which no philosophy no science can acquire a beatitude of which no satisfaction of desire can give the enjoyment a thirst for love which no human relation can quench a peace which can be found nowhere not even in death so where does it come from it is the power the happiness the light the knowledge the beatitude the love and the peace which come to us from the divine grace so she is aspiring literally to be an instrument of the grace very difficult thing very rare complete self forgetfulness is required so she is aspiring for that grant o lord that i may be like a fire that illumines and warms like a fountain that takes away thirst like a tree that shelters and protects men are so unhappy so ignorant they need so much to be helped my confidence in thee and for this where does she turn to the divine who can give all this the divine presence my confidence in thee my inner certitude grow from day to day and from day to day also i feel thy love more living in my heart so all these things come from where from love this is what is the central malady human beings are deprived of it see all people rush towards drugs and all these why do they rush towards it because they don't have the natural joy what is the thing which most naturally creates in us a condition of joy if you really look at it it is love it brings joy and beauty simultaneously automatically you don't have to do anything you know it brings a happiness so human beings suffer so they go into artificial meat methods like they'll go into drugs alcohol partying money power all these ways all kinds of you know uh, what is called as flings attractions because they are looking for that but where will you find it so naturally they go more and more disappointed they are caught in the dark net they sink down go toward the abyss very unfortunate but this deep need can only be fulfilled by that power of love and where this love should come from from the divine so we have to connect ourselves to the divine love and she is experiencing that she feels this love more and more living in her heart thy light at once brighter and more soft so she is asking for that light usha kal it is bright and soft not like the prachand tej of surya because it will burn away that's one kind of is the same sun you see this is very interesting of all the names of the sun one of them is savitra you have savitri so, so savitra very interestingly refers to the sun whose warmth you can feel at night it is the sun which is hidden which is going to rise just before the dawn so she is the cup bearer of the dawn so it's the illumination which which brings which is soft and bright and more and more i fail to make a distinction between thy work and my life this is what we have to understand between my personality and the whole earth so first part is easier second part may be more difficult the first part is why do we make a distinction mother's work and myself my life six hours i am doing her work or eight hours maybe i don't know how many hours the rest of the time it's my life my private time the life is the work our living should be such our breathing should be such 
that as we move through this earth, wherever we move, we bring hope, so a seed of courage, of aspiration, of light, of love, that should be our work. That wherever we go, streams of sweetness flow. Shubhinda says that in one of the um, early letters to Barinda, what does he want? He says, I don't want hundreds of thousands of men. I just want hundred men. And then he says what he expects of them, who are so full and brimming, brimming with Shakti, that wherever they stand, hundreds around them are affected by that. That is what is the real work. This work outside is a preparation so that if we do it with the right attitude, this should develop within us. We don't even have to tell anybody that we are coming from, let us say, Shurabindu Ashram. They should ask us, tell us your secret. <laughs> How come you have so much sweetness and warmth and love? Then you should say, Mother's Grace. <laughs> it should not be, I am coming from Ashram expecting that people should <laughs> welcome you and greet you. Your action should speak, otherwise it's so horrible, no? <laughs> people will get disillusioned. Oh, Ashram, my God. <laughs> it should be such that people should come and ask you, where is the origin, where is the fount from where you are drawing your breath from? And then when you say that it's because the breath I draw is from her grace, then it carries a meaning. Otherwise, though I am from the ashram, better not to say this. <laughs> you say, oh, achha, achha, okay. <laughs> we have seen one product. <laughs> Who will explain this is all, we are all products in the making. None of us is a finished product, but you can't explain all that. No, people expect that by the very fact you have joined, you are a finished product. We are products in the making, but what should be the direction of this product? She is revealing to us, it should be such that the whole body, mind, heart, life, will should be like a transparent vessel, vehicle of the divinity within us. This is the work that we all become little, little divine beings upon earth. After all, it is a divine humanity that they are going to create. We don't have to talk about, you know, big things, all the planes of consciousness <laughs> between mind and super mind. We don't need to know that. There is a divine nature, everybody knows. Sure, Swami Vivekananda said, I am so proud to belong to a civilization where we are taught in Hindu thought that there is a divine nature. We are not fallen creatures, sinners, all this is not there. But something has come in the way of divine nature. What has come? All that we have gathered, the dust. What is that dust in the course of journey through millenniums and trillenniums? Animal nature, asuric nature, all that. Desire, lust, greed, anger, we have gathered. It's not our true nature. So, now what do we do? We enter the bathroom. When, you know, we gathered all this dust, what should we do? We first enter the washroom. We are cleansed. And what is that super washroom? Mother's love. And when we are cleansed, then our true nature should manifest. And this true nature, now what Sherbindo brings out something additionally to it, that yes, even when we recover our true nature, our natural instrument are still like an animal. Because evolution has not created instruments to contain and express. Speech fails and fumbles. The heart gets confused when it experiences torrents and floods of love and sweetness inside. It can get intoxicated. Passions, they don't know, they can take all kinds of directions. So, the instruments of nature also have to change to adapt to this new consciousness, to the divine nature. All Sanatana Dharma is about the true divine nature inside us. But we are not able to, even when we discover it inside, how do we express it? Through instruments. So, unless the instrumental nature changes, unless the outer being changes, it will continue to remain only something which is inside. So what yogis in the past would do, they discover their true nature and withdraw. But here the whole stress is on changing. But the fundamental thing is first. First is to discover, recover our true divine nature. And when we discover our true divine nature, then we become a God-like humanity. Where... Those who come in contact feel quenched, their thirst quenched, feel illumined, receive hope, receive strength, receive joy. There are people, if you meet them for a few minutes and come out, you will feel, oh my God, drained out, isn't it? 
There are some you just have a passing contact and you feel that something has changed in your day. So that is the kind of humanity we should be and for which she has confidence in the grace. And she says more and more, she cannot make a distinction between thy work and my life. To live, to breathe is your work. Between my personality and the whole earth. Because, now look at it, personality is moving in a certain framework. Isn't it? So, can we say that, that within the ashram we can be like angels? But when I go out, I can be like the most depotic person ever born on earth. <laughs> no, the whole earth belongs to the divine. This is a training ground. When we move out, all over the world, more and more she says, I cannot distinguish. That's how the wideness comes. Everywhere she discovers the same presence and that's how ultimately she identifies with the whole earth consciousness. Lord, Lord, thy splendor is infinite. So to link ourselves to that splendor, which is infinite. We draw from here and there. That's why these are finite sources. Finite sources can never ultimately quench us. That's why when, whenever we draw from finite sources, momentarily it can satisfy but it cannot fill the thirst of the spirit. So as soon as possible, unless that person is connected to the infinite. Otherwise, invariably after a time, you will see that things tend to fail. Lord, Lord, thy splendor is infinite. Thy truth is marvelous. Is it? We have heard truth is harsh, bare. This is the Vedic description of truth. What is truth? The Vedas say, Raso ve saha, it is delight. It is death which says truth is bare and harsh in Savitri. Truth is not bare and harsh. Even in its bareness, it is, you know, a seat for Shiva. Who can say Shiva is harsh? Seated by his side is Uma. Who can say she is harsh? So she Truth is supreme delight. Mother has said, truth is supreme harmony and delight. She has added one more word. Why? Because truth is a completeness. And wherever truth acts, it brings harmony. You will know it by the action. Truth will never cause disruption, disharmony, disorder, chaos, never. The action of truth is like it brings out harmony. In the process of harmony, things will get churned, certain things will go in another place, but it will all be in a very beautiful way, harmonious way. That's why it has taken trilleniums for truth to emerge. Otherwise, if truth wanted to emerge, uh, human way, it would have said, okay, now I just spread my limbs. <laughs> Everything would have collapsed. So she is saying, truth is marvelous and thy all-powerful love will save the world. So again we see that illumination that comes from truth and the splendor and the love which quenches thirst and becomes like a tree that shelters and protects. So I'll read this prayer again. Marvelous prayer. Wonderful. June 17th, 1913 Grant, O Lord, that I may be like a fire that illumines and warms like a fountain that takes away thirst, like a tree that shelters and protects. Men are so unhappy, so ignorant, they need so much to be helped. Unhappy because of ignorance. Absolutely equal to each other. Each other. Batch of ignorance is suffering. Batch of knowledge is delight. My confidence in thee, my inner certitude grow more, grow from day to day and from day to day also I feel thy love more living in my heart, thy light at once brighter and more soft and more and more I fail to make a distinction between thy work and my life, between my personality and the whole earth. So beautiful. It's not just what work which is given to us in the office we do and it is mother's work. Every interaction of life is mother's work. When we are gazing at a plant, we can gaze it with compassion and love or we can look at it as where are the fruits that I need to pluck for my advantage. We can look at a worm and disdain it 
or we can look at a worm and as shurvinda says what is god he says thou who disdainest not the worm to be nor even the clod therefore we know by that humility that thou art god because everything in life is nothing but god lord lord thy splendor is infinite thy truth is marvelous thy truth is marvelous and thy all powerful love will save the world she not even invoking she knows it will save the world so if those people who are very concerned about saving the world <laughs> instead of <laughs> okay there will be people who will try all kinds of things everybody has its place but those who are drawn to yoga should become instruments of her love and this love is an all victorious love it's not just an ordinary human love and you know what we understand it's a infinite so we should become if we are really serious about saving the world this we should become again it has nothing to do with what ordinarily we understand by love it's a very powerful thing it can change you see so many stories of buddha anguli mal chaitanya mahaprabhu jagai madai that is the kind of love and of course countless people in the life of mother and shurbindo that is what we should more and more embody if we want to save this world thank you namaste